welcome to topic five entitled chieftaincy and modern systems of governance now in this topic i will give this introduction which is very central to the elaboration of sub components within the topic now we know that chiefs provide leadership and serve as embodiment of our culture traditions and customs <coughs> rather than consider chieftaincy as a relic of the past the institution still plays an important role under modern democratic governance now let's look at the issue of dispute resolution highly powerful kings have been enlisted by the central government to help deliberate in matters that border on ethnic or political crisis such as the appointment of committee of eminent chiefs by the Kufuor government, chaired by the Asante Hine Otunfo Osoi to the second, to find peaceful and amicable solution for the Dagbon chieftaincy crisis. Examples also exist in other African countries where chiefs have been given a meaningful judicial role in the administration of justice in those countries. For example, in Swaziland, or in Swazi, we have the chiefs holding their own courts. And these courts actually have been established and given a backing by the government. For example, the Administrative Order of 1998 gave chiefs power of hearing, trial, and determination of all criminal charges in Swaziland. Now let's come to the issue of taxation and elections. At the district level, there's simply no way by which tax officials will be able to take taxes without the involvement of the chiefs. So in a way, we understand or we know that chiefs are contributing to the fa financial or economic development of the country. Now, traditional rulers have also delivered meaningful services in areas of political or democratic development. Almost every election year, chiefs come on board to offer advice to parliamentary and presidential aspirants to go about their conduct in a manner that will not bring about chaos in society. Also, in the display of the voters' register, Usually, the chiefs send their men around to educate the community to come out in their numbers to register. We are all aware of one important servant in the community. That is the gong beater. It is this individual that the chief normally employs and gives orders specifically to go around the community to encourage people to come out and register and to vote in a peaceful and orderly manner. Now, we should also understand that in our attempt, in our attempt to, to democratize, we had to draw what we call the Constitution. And the 1992 Constitution could not have been what it is without the input of chiefs. So, for example, the paramount chief of Agogo, Akwekusapo, was very critical in issues related to the constitution. And in fact, he gave a lot of advice to the committee that was appointed to ensure that we had a new constitution. Apart from him, we have other chiefs that indeed were given specific roles to bring about rules and regulations that will be incorporated into the constitution of what? Ghana. Now, I have briefly also mentioned about chiefs and then the way they talk to parliamentarians, the way they talk to presidential aspirants. Considering the fact that the operation and rules of engagement in politics is often wrought out in a bitter struggle that leaves bitter taste in society and makes sections of the population sworn enemies. The role of the chief and chieftaincy 
as a safety net and in unifying the community cannot be overemphasized. So here, despite the fact that the topic is very brief, we have touched on certain things that are very essential and very critical. In the sense that without chiefs, it will have been very difficult for most of the disputes to be resolved in any given society. There's simply no government that hasn't had a brush with the Jaguar crisis. But for now, we know that the Committee of Permanent Chiefs have worked hard to ensure that both parties obey the rules of engagement. I have also indicated the extent to which chiefs play a very critical role in as far as taxation is concerned. We know how important taxes are to the development of every nation. And as a country that still largely relies on taxes from the local people, it is the role of the chiefs that ensures the inflow of the money generated through taxation. Market this, they ensure that everybody that comes to sell or buy pays one form of tax or the other. That goes to build up the financial base of most of the district assemblies and eventually the government. I've also indicated their role as far as educating the electorate is concerned. And I've indicated the extent to which they have also been able to play a very critical role in educating parliamentarians and presidential aspirants. Most of the tensions that exist within communities are actually being solved by the chiefs. Otherwise, I think that we will have more serious problems regarding democracy in Africa and especially in Ghana. Now, I will refer you to some of the books, as you can see. And then I will also try as much as possible to encourage you to go to Sakai and then uh, have some of the sample questions. And of course, send me some of your questions. Any clarification that you want, you can go to Sakai and then get to me. Thank you very much. 